Welcome to The Influencer Show with your host, Trishon Ben Salmi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Influencer Show where I interview people who can help influence way you live life in a number of different ways. I'm Rossi Seven, and today we have a very, very special guest for us today. So if you'd like to introduce yourself to your listeners and let them know a little bit about you. Thank you so much for having me on, Trayshawn. It's so amazing to be here with you. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Louise George. I am a life and success coach. I am a soul aligned life and success coach. So essentially I support people in creating what I call soul aligned success and a life that feels as good as it looks. And that's really, really what it's all about. That is absolutely amazing. And why don't you share with the listeners why you do what you do? It's a bit of a long story, so I'll try and keep it as succinct as possible. But I, um, I felt from a young age that I was really called to something. And maybe you resonate with that as well. I'm sure a lot of your listeners will. Um, but I didn't know what it was. And so I tried lots of different things. I was always really curious and, and tried to, and my parents also were amazing in encouraging me to try different things and really just explore my own gifts and, and skills, which I'm so grateful for. It took me longer than I would have liked. I'm so inspired by the work that you do because if I was doing this kind of work at your age, I would have been so happy. But I've had so many different kinds of experiences on my path to finding kind of what I was called to. Um, I've been in business for about 15 years altogether now. And I've had a property company, I had a fitness coaching company. I worked in advertising for a while. I've had lots of different careers and businesses that I loved and I'm so grateful for the experience of. But there was always something niggling me, something that was like, yeah, this isn't quite it. And I would look around and be like, yeah, no, this isn't, this isn't the thing yet. And so then I would do what we're kind of taught in society and traditional education to kind of set the next goal and go after the next thing. And then I'd get there and then it would be like, okay, not this either. And it would just be this constant external pursuit of, of success and happiness and fulfillment. Um, and there was one thing or a couple of things that I knew that I really wanted to do always and that I was so good at and that was acting, presenting and writing. So those three things were kind of a, a thread throughout. Um, but I used to believe, I used to have limiting beliefs that you know only certain people could do those things, that you had to be either really, really wealthy or lucky or you know right time and place kind of thing. So I didn't always pursue them but they always came back to pursue me you know every time I was like no I'm gonna give up acting I'm gonna you know I'll listen to the people that tell me it's too hard and I'll go and get a real job whatever that means um but it would always tap me on the shoulder it was always that you know no you're meant to be creative you're you're here to act to present to write to you know express your gifts and when I had my first taste of business which was thanks to my my partner my boyfriend I realized that that was the path that was going to help me to, to create the life that I wanted. You know, I, once I'd had that taste of working for myself, I, I went into a business partnership with him and I was like, this is it. I don't have to work for someone else and, um, you know, live for somebody else's mission that I don't even really believe in. I can create, you know, life and business on my terms. And while it isn't easy, it's not an easy path it lit me up and it gave me the opportunity to see that I can create my own success. And also in, in being an entrepreneur, I'm able to pursue the other things that really lights me up. So acting, presenting and writing. And, and now I'm doing all of those things. So I am a, a film actor, I'm a, a writer, um, I'm a presenter and I'm now a coach, as I said at the beginning. So it feels like the, the kind of long journey, you know, I'm still relatively young, <laughs> but the, the long, the journey that felt long at the time, now it all makes sense. Now I've come to a point in my life where I'm really doing all of the things that I love and I feel so grateful for that. So yeah, I hope that it wasn't too long a story for you. <laughs> that was great. It was great. Thank you for sharing. That really, that really is amazing. Yeah, definitely. And why don't you share with us, like, what would you say has been like the biggest influence on you that you wish I'd known sooner? Mm. So many, of, of course, as we all do, we have so many, so many influences and so many teachers throughout life. And, and, and in my opinion and experience, it's, it's lifelong, you know, it's a lifelong journey and commitment to continue growing and expanding and, and uh, becoming the person that we're here to be, right? To be fully expressed. 
what I would say has changed my life in every way and I'm so grateful for is is having mentors and teachers you know and and there is a certain amount of success that you can create yourself and I did that like in the early days of business and and in most things that I've pursued I'm very good at kind of creating opportunities and making things happen myself and I know that you are amazing at that but I got to a certain point where I kept bumping up against the ceiling and I wasn't really creating the level of success that I wanted. You know, I, I was watching other entrepreneurs who had the kind of business and lifestyle that I wanted. I was like, how are they doing that? And I'm doing the same thing, you know, and I'm working really, really hard. And I realized um, that I needed support, that I couldn't do it alone. And, and none of us can. But if anyone's listening to this or watching this who's like me, you know, we're very good at at helping others and, and making things happen and working things out ourselves, but we're not always good at asking for help. I'm certainly not, I can only really speak for myself. Um, but when I really started to ask for help, when I really started, you know, asking mentors and coaches and teachers to, to help me to do what they had, you know, you really get to collapse your timeline then. And I, my success really accelerated and I was able to, you know, not make the mistakes that others had before. And, and now I feel so blessed that I help my clients do the same. You know, I'm really working with my clients on their mindsets and their businesses and, and um, aligning themselves with the life that they want. So they get to do it much quicker. They don't have to take the kind of 10, 15 year journey that I did to get there. So yeah, the biggest influence definitely is working alongside great teachers, great mentors and great peers, you know, having a good community around you of inspiring people. And, um, and so I'm really grateful to you having me on here as well, because it's in these conversations, isn't it? That, you know, we get inspired by other people and we see that things are possible. Um, and I really believe that we can have doing anything, do have do and be anything I should say. And I totally agree because like many people, they have so many like limits and beliefs and all things like that. And it's just about being able to then break past those barriers that we have either set for ourselves or that we've even seen just in like our environment and just being able to like break past those barriers and set ourselves like different limits and um, achieve more. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you then prefer to influence others to change the way they live their lives for the better? Mm, great question. So I don't see my role as influencing so much as really supporting and kind of walking beside someone. And my job as a coach, and everyone works very differently, you know, there are so many different ways of coaching. But for me, it's about working with the individual because everyone is different. Everyone has different ways of learning. Everyone has different beliefs and limiting beliefs and fears and insecurities. So I'm really interested in the person that's in front of me and helping to them to, to recognize their gifts and their skills and all of the things that make them such an incredibly unique gift to the world. And I really believe that we each have an integral part to play and we all are extremely talented and gifted in our own ways. And so I feel very blessed and honored and privileged to be able to walk side any human really and to discover their stories and what makes them tick and to help them to become more fully expressed because that's that's really what I'm so passionate about is, is for me first of all how can I become more fully expressed more myself more um vibrant more radiant more um you know how can I share my gifts more and get my message out in the world more and that's what I desire for others as well is to help them really live their fullest life while while we're here yeah, I think that's actually really important because then as a result of being able to like tap into our own uniqueness and just being able to utilize our gifts and our passions to uh, the fullest then helps us to live a life of joy and happiness knowing that we do the things that we like. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so uh, we're not often taught that and I think, you know, I know from, from knowing your family, like how blessed you are in the way you all inspire each other. You've got an incredible mum and grandmother who have been great role models, but not everybody has that, right? So many people, and, and even if we go outside of our families, society often is, is, isn't geared for us to be our best selves, right? There are so many rules and restrictions and boundaries and um, things that we're told that we should do. And so this is the other way I work with my clients is to help them to get out of their heads and all of those shoulds and coulds and 
the programming from other people that isn't necessarily what they would choose for themselves or um, that is keeping them stuck. So yeah, that's a really great point. I, I, I totally agree. And what would you say people should do to stay motivated during moments of crisis? Mm, that couldn't be a more important question right now, right, as we're recording this. Um, again, I think this is so individual. And I had a conversation with someone yesterday, a, a, a friend and, and fellow coach, and actually I had her on my podcast and she was talking about, you know, if, if you are just surviving right now, that's okay. And so actually I want to reiterate that message, like wherever anyone is at right now, be kind to yourself, be compassionate, you know, not just in a global crisis like we're experiencing now, but anytime you're feeling overwhelmed or maybe you're going through some kind of personal crisis, first of all, it's okay. Like to, to feel whatever you're feeling and to go through the range of human emotions that we do. Um, from my own life experience and from working with so many clients as well, it's so important to feel all the emotions because what we can tend to do is make it wrong, make it make ourselves wrong to feel scared or wrong to feel um, not overwhelmed or frustrated or upset. But actually, you know, as much as the work that we do as coaches and entrepreneurs, it's all about helping people to be in joy and full expression. And the work that I do is about being there most of the time. It is so important not to suppress other emotions because then that gets trapped in our bodies, right? And, and so that's the one thing that I would say to people is, yeah, be compassionate with yourself, be kind, allow emotions to move through and don't suppress them. Spend as much time in nature as possible, you know, with your feet on the ground, barefoot if possible, you know, earthing, um, touching trees, hugging trees if you're, if you're a big hippie like me. Um, as much time in nature as possible, as much time having conversations with people who are supportive and who you can share and be open with and who inspire you and, and really nurture you and fill you up. Um, breath work, you know, there are lots of breathing and I'd love to gift that for, for you and your audience as well. I've got some breath work trainings that people can tap into very, very simply and I'll share one now if I may. Um, some of the work that I do with my clients is... Um, called multi-brain integration. And it's about our head and our body being in coherence. What happens when we're experiencing crisis often is we're really stuck in our heads. You know, when, when the thoughts just keep spinning and spinning and spinning and we get into so much fear. And so by doing this balanced breathing technique that I'm about to share, it will help the voices in our heads that are keeping us in fear to quieten down for us to be able to drop into our body and to feel more grounded and safe. It takes just a couple of minutes or longer if you wish. And it is simply breathing in really slowly and steadily to the count of six and just hold for a second at the top and then breathing out slowly and steadily to the count of six. Hold for a second. And just keep that going for a couple of minutes. And what that does is it helps our nervous system to rebalance. It helps our, our head and our body to communicate so we're not kind of just spinning out. Um, and it just gives us that moment to pause. And so anyone can do this, like whoever you are, wherever you are, it's free, you know, and, and breath is really, is everything, you know, obviously if we don't breathe, you know, <laughs> we don't live, <laughs> but, but it, it helps us to um, control our emotions or to keep our emotions in check. It helps us to stay balanced and grounded. And so this, that's my best piece of advice for anyone. And I use this throughout the day myself. If you're ever feeling ungrounded, out of control, fearful, anything that is, is making you feel less than your best self, just stop and do that breathing exercise for a couple of minutes and it will, it will rebalance everything. And you can do it as many times through the day as you need to. You know, even if you've got like 10 children running around and you, you, know, you haven't got a minute in the day, just do it when you're on the toilet. You know, you can take, <laughs> yeah. take a couple of minutes wherever you are to do that. And so, yeah, I would say your breath is your best anchor to cope with any kind of crisis. I totally agree with that because then as a result, just like simply like taking that second just to simply like acknowledge where you are, it then helps you like think of like how you're going to act accordingly. And I really do advise that you listeners do give the exercise a try. And could you share with us what is your passion? So many. <laughs> I've got so <laughs> many passions. So um I have already touched on my work a little bit. So 
acting, writing, presenting. So I love interviews like this. You know, I, I like uh, having these kind of conversations. I'm really passionate about just helping people to be their best selves, you know, in, in whatever way I can. And often for me, that's through storytelling. So whether I'm um, playing a character in a play or in a film, whether I'm having conversations like this and, and sharing stories, if I'm writing um, or in coaching conversations, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by human beings. I'm fascinated by psychology. And, and, and that's, you know, where all of my work and passions cross over is it's, it's, yeah, people, people and life. I'm curious about everything. And this, this was me since I was born. I think my parents will tell you that the question that I ask the most, and I think most children do is why, you know, they'd give me an answer. I'd be like, yeah, but why? Just for, I'm forever curious and do, yeah, just passionate about life. Mm, it's actually, cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's actually really important. Just, I think it's actually a good trait to have because then being like inquisitive and just asking like constant questions that helps you not only d dive deeper but it also helps you find like the meaning behind the meaning as to why people may act a certain way why they may partake in certain things and things like that so it's definitely I think that most of us should try to uh, involve into our lives and if you had a megaphone and you could say one thing to the world that have a lasting influence what would it be and why? It's all possible I re if there was one thing I could shout through that megaphone, it would be, it's all possible. I really, so the thing that I want to shake people awake about, like anything, there's a quote by Napoleon Hill, which is anything the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Hmm. It, we really can. We are, we are limitless. We have infinite possibilities of what we can do with our lives. But so many people are so blinkered and stuck in, you know, what's right in front of them in the physical you know their problems or what what's not working but actually if you can just open up and embrace that concept that everything is temporary and anything is possible that's exciting you know and i really want everyone to to wake up and realize that and know that and remember that i think that's something that is really important especially at a time right now because people are struggling to do like simple things in their lives and they're finding like limitations and blockages in so many different areas so it's just about like simply becoming aware and taking off those barriers and just like helping them break past their fears so that they can achieve more and just get more out of life as a whole mm, yeah definitely and I, I do want to kind of um touch on what you just said a little bit more if I may but that you know, the people are saying a lot right now that we're all in this together. And, and in one hand, we are, we're all very connected. But on the other hand, everyone has a different life experience. You know, it, we're not all in this together in the same experience. Everyone's experience is very different. So again, I just want to honor where everyone's at individually, like whatever you're going through right now, it's okay. Like it's okay to feel the emotions. You know, if, if all you are able to do right now is get through the day, that's okay. And you know, when I say it's all possible, I really want everyone to know that. Like this, if this day is tough, remember this is going to pass. Like tomorrow's a new day. There is there is always new a new opportunity to start again. And and the breath practice I shared, you know, if that's the only thing that you can do in the day to keep yourself grounded and anchored, use it. Use it keep coming back to that, keep bringing yourself back to the present moment and repeat those, those mantras to yourself, you know, those, those old kind of mantras of this too will pass because if you, if any of us look back at any challenges we've ever overcome in our lives, we always have, right? The things that at the time feel so horrific, difficult, challenging, whatever it is at whatever level, we have survived and we've got through them. And this is what we are incredible at as human beings is we're amazing at adapting we're very adaptable and we we shift and grow and change in every moment so staying present and just knowing that you know everything's going to change everything is temporary and moving through mm. i think that's actually something that's really really important because then simply being able to acknowledge that this too shall pass it then puts you in a positive mindset and it just changes your perspective 
as to how you look at life as a whole. Mm. And also embracing the positive, right? Because I think we can also be really quick to um, to not celebrate enough. Like, you know, we things happen and we're straight on to the next thing. So I think this too shall pass is not just about the, when we're in like, the bad stuff, yeah. but also this too shall pass. If you're going through a really great time or celebrating something, really relish it because that's also going to pass, right? And yeah, we're so quick. To, I, I certainly have to check myself on this. I'm, I'm so... Um, quick to be creating the next thing when actually and uh, do you feel familiar with Lewis Howes yeah yeah I thought you would be um I heard him say when his first book came out that um people were constantly saying to him what's next what's next and he said something really beautiful and that was he he was saying no I'm not thinking about what's next I'm, I'm asking what's now because mm. I've been waiting for this book to come out for 10 years like I've wanted to write a book for 10 years and now it's here I'm really just focused on what's right now. And I was like, that's so cool of him to, to be in that place and a great message to all of us. Like, stop being so caught up in what's next. If something's going great, like really, really celebrate it, appreciate it, soak it all up. And if something isn't going so great, again, it's gonna pass and there will be something great and, and something amazing will happen again. It, it's life, you know, there are ups and downs. And this is a message for life, but also, you know, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. This is a, a great message for entrepreneurs because as in life, same in business, there's no one straight line to success, you know? It's a roller coaster. there are ups and downs. And, and just to know that I think can bring such relief, you know, to, to know that, you know, successful entrepreneurs aren't just at the top of the mountain all the time. You know, they're overcoming challenges every single day. And, and um, 90% of the, the stuff that we're creating and putting out there isn't successful, whatever that means. So it's really important to, to enjoy the, the journey. Good, bad, ugly, all of it. Definitely, I totally agree. And I think that's something that's really, really important. Like, just for everyone, just being able to be in the now and be grateful for like what you have achieved because like many people even like myself i used to struggle with that like i had achieved something i'd be thinking oh i need to get this done but it's about taking that time out to simply show gratitude and just like even celebrating uh, just like what you've accomplished as well mm. and it's necessary it's a universal law right what you're what uh, what you focus on expands so if you focus on what you're grateful for if you can really be grateful with what you have right now whatever that is however much or little that may seem to you, if you can be really grateful, and we all have things to be grateful for, whatever the circumstances, we can focus on that, then we will be given more things to be grateful for. Yeah, definitely, definitely, I definitely agree. Um, what advice would you then give to those who maybe they've had their very own million pound a day at a time like this? Now is the time. <laughs> I actually wrote about this when we first went into lockdown. You know, launch that podcast, write that book. And, and it's not just for now going, you know, it's not just going through a global crisis. That it's just now is the only time ever. So I, it, I don't know why anyone's ever waiting for anything. Like you and people are often, so these are the excuses, right? I haven't got the time, the money, the confidence or the clarity. And so what I would say to any of those things, and there may be some truth in them, but they're always going to be there, those blocks. We're never going to have enough money or time or clarity or confidence. And what I want to remind people of is that those things all come as results. You have to create the time. The money will be created in the, in the doing, in the showing up, right? Um, and confidence and clarity, which I would say pretty much every single one of my clients, every single person that I work with is looking for confidence and or clarity in something. And the reminder again is that they come as results. You're not required to, to be confident. You're not required to be totally clear. What is required is courage because it takes enormous courage, doesn't it? To put yourself out there and to create something and, and to show it to the world. And no one is, is free from fear. You know, however confident we are or seem, those who are out there doing it and creating it, like you and I, you know, with our podcasts and our books and things, it's not that we are more confident than everyone else in the world. It's just that we choose to, to put it out there anyway. And then you get the confidence when you've created that thing. And when people say, well done, you know, confidence grows. And the more you put yourself out there, the less scary it is. And so really it's about learning to... Um, 
to move forwards with fear because it's always going to be there. And there's a, a gorgeous book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I don't know if you, you're familiar with it, but she writes about fear in this book and she writes about it so beautifully in that write a letter to fear and let it know that, you know, it's, it's along for the ride and you know that and you accept that, but it's absolutely not allowed to sit in the front seat of the car. Like it has to stay in the back seat. It cannot touch the stereo and it absolutely cannot touch the steering wheel. And so it's really just, and you know, that's a, a quite a nice way of looking at it, but it is, it's having that conversation with fear and recognizing that it's going to be there, but Hey, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this book. I'm going to write this book anyway. I'm going to launch this program. I'm going to start this business anyway. So now is the time, you know, and we really do have a relatively short, precious amount of time in this form, in this lifetime. Right. And so why not now get it out there, you know, do the things that you really want to do because time will pass anyway. And the worst thing in life is to have regrets of the things that you didn't do. And it is the most, sadly, the most common thing that people say on their deathbeds is that they regret not doing the thing. And I, for one, I'm not going to be one of those people. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not going to be one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I think that's actually really important. Just like being able to take action on like all of your, not all of your ideas, because then you need to simply like analyze whether it's something that you actually want to work towards but it's just about like not holding your soul back not procrastinating because like many things can solve us like for example when I first started this I hated the camera there was a number of things that I didn't like about it but it's about like taking the action and then like you said confidence shall grow along the way so it's just about being in the now and being present and just taking action on the things that can actually help better you as a person in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And yeah, it's so important to, to check in with, you know, is this, is this true for me? So I, I often say like the work that I do with my clients is helping them to remember who they really are, what they truly desire, and then creating it. And so the, the work that I'm doing and helping them get out of their heads is really about communicating with their hearts, with their soul, with what it is they truly desire. So they're not just creating things for the sake of creating it. You know, like I said earlier, I did that with previous businesses and careers. You know, I, I had businesses because I thought I could. I saw an opportunity and I created it. But it wasn't from here. It wasn't, it wasn't because I was really excited about it and passionate about it. And so I really am passionate about helping others to not make the mistakes that I did, you know, and create the business and the project and the book and whatever because you can't not. Yeah, I definitely agree. Because then when you're like in alignment with everything, everything flows naturally and easily and then you're not struggling to like force that book out and things like that it's simply it's not it doesn't even feel like you have to try it it's something that you just like you feel like you can't go without doing and what would you say is the biggest like issue or maybe even a problem that you are then aiming to face are aiming to solve as an influencer in your own industry That's a really great question, Treshawn. What's the biggest problem that I'm aiming to solve? I work mainly with women entrepreneurs. I work with men as well, but mainly women because I see so many more limiting beliefs and fears and insecurities and, you know, we, and we all have them. But for women especially, often they're so programmed to behave a certain way or so stuck in shoulds and roles and, and things like that I'm really really passionate in in helping women to to step into their full power and to realize that they can get out there and create a business and, and get their message out to the world and like I'm, I'm really passionate about that for, for everyone like I said earlier it's, for me it's about helping people to identify their gifts and to to really share them with the world because I there's um a quote from I think it was the Dalai Lama yeah Dalai Lama the world will be saved by the Western woman. I don't know if you've heard that one. And I agree to a certain extent, but I, I believe actually that the world will be saved by people living on purpose, like living their passions, sharing their gifts. And, and that, that's what I'm most passionate about. And, and it excites me so much to see one of my clients start the business, write the book, you know, get their true work out into the world, especially when they've worked previously or studied previously things that weren't in alignment to then see them and, and it's visible it's physically visible to see someone go from you know almost a shadow of themselves because they're not living in alignment to then 
blossoming, you know, men and women, you know, to see someone like step up and, and be so proud of themselves because they're doing the work that is, doesn't even feel like work. It's their gifts that they're sharing. That's, that's what I'm really, really passionate about, you know, helping people to, the problem is people just living out of alignment, you know, following the shoulds and the coulds and the have tos and so opening boxes, I guess, letting people out of those, <laughs> those old paradigms. I think that's actually so true because like when you then live a life on purpose and when you know like what you want to do, you no longer have to worry about like what are they going to think of me and things like that because you know that this is what you have set out to do, this is what you stand for and if someone wants to join along the journey they can do so but this is something that you are dedicated to doing and you don't really, you don't really give um, a lot of thought to a negative input that people may um, think towards like whatever you're doing or whatever you like, just a number of things really. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true. And naturally things just fall in and out of your life then when you're living on purpose, when you're living in alignment, uh, you know, the right people come in, the right teachers come in, the right friends, the right support network. And the people who aren't meant to be there, you know, kind of fall away. And, and it's an environment thing. It's not just people, it's the places and things around you as well. Everything in the world shifts around you as you come more and more into alignment. Mm, I absolutely agree. And what would you say was the so-called pivotal point along your journey? And what did it then teach you? The, sorry, the pivotal point in my journey. Again, there's been so many. I've had so many crossroads. Most recently, in most recent years, it was realizing where my gifts cross over. For so long, I had a belief that I had to choose. And, and people would tell me that I had to choose. And so I took on those, those beliefs of other people. You know, as an actor, as a writer, as a presenter, as an entrepreneur, I had so many different, I, I've always been multi-passionate. And people would say, you know, you can't do that. You've got to get a real job or you, you have to pick one. You can't do all of the things, you know, pick the thing that makes you the most money. And for someone who's multi-passionate or, or someone who's creative even, to be told that you can't do what you love or you have to pick something is soul crushing. Because to pick something is almost impossible. And to have to do something just for the money, not because you love it, soul crushing. And I did it, by the way, as well. I actually did go and, that's why my journey was so long, because I did go and try the real job thing and worked in offices and in corporate. And it just made me miserable, you know? Like I said earlier, working for somebody else's mission, you know, working for a paycheck, doing the, like, the whole nine to five thing or nine to midnight in my case sometimes in advertising you know it wasn't for me and so the the biggest pivotal moment for me was when I realized that I didn't have to choose that there are other multi-passionate people and entrepreneurs there are plenty of other multi-passionate entrepreneurs and people out there and now I'm surrounded by them and I'm like where were these people when I was younger <laughs> right yeah, it, it, the world is full of and, and incredibly successful multi-passionate entrepreneurs and creatives as well and so really it's about surrounding yourself with those people that if you're not surrounded by those people right now seek them out you know that we have free access and immediate access to the whole world pretty much online so at our fingertips we can you know create an environment of like-minded supportive people so my life completely changed when a, I surrounded myself with people who were the example of what I wanted. And B, I realized that actually I didn't have to choose, that I could embrace all of my gifts. And then I, when I embraced that, when I chose that, I saw that actually they were all kind of the same. So acting is about exploring the site, the human psyche, and about relationships and connection and storytelling coaching is is the same it's about exploring the human psyche and relationships and connection and storytelling and presenting and writing so then I was like oh so I've been trying all this time to pick one thing actually I can do them all and they all cross over anyway yeah they're all and, and really it's it's about you know it was about me realizing that it was all about me it's not about choosing to be a thing or do something. Actually, it's about your being. 
and expressing that. Mm, I think that's actually really important because then when you finally come to the realisation as to why you were interested in these different areas, then it actually puts, sets you on the right path because then you know like this is why I'm interested in them and then you're then able to get involved in things that either seem like they're related to them or maybe it's something that you then like as a result of just becoming clear as to why you want to do what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And what I want to add to that is that it wasn't just a light bulb moment. I didn't just suddenly one day wake up and go, oh, I've got it now. I know the meaning to life. And it was it was a journey, you know, and it really was me just saying yes to things that lit me up. Me just, because I could, you know, I didn't know. I couldn't work out. Like I said, when I was young, I felt called to something, but I didn't know what I was called to exactly. And so my way to this point where now I'm, I, I really feel like I'm living that there's still more to, to step into, but I'm really living my calling now. It was following each thread, saying yes, exploring, being curious, listening to my heart and taking one, one step at a time, each next right action. And that builds up until suddenly you're in a place where you're like, oh, life is pretty sweet now. Right. I've been creating these things and, and one thing at a time has, has now created, in my case, this gorgeous business and, and career and opportunities and experiences. And everything just starts to unfold when you just listen to your heart and follow that. Mm. And I think it's actually really important because as a result of just like, as you say, like following your heart, following your passion and just living a life of, of purpose and on purpose then it actually just drives you to then not only attract things into your life that can then help you and then inspire you to help others but then it also helps you just have a large impact because then you're simply doing what you were actually meant to be doing doing yeah exactly yeah definitely and what would you say are like the top three lessons that you have learned along your journey and how did they then influence where you look at life Mm. only three <laughs> um the top one i guess is to not take it so seriously when we're most open to manifest is when we're having fun when we're following our joy and exploring from a place of like childlike curiosity so yeah, to not take things so seriously, because for so long, I was head braining my way. I was trying to work out what's the strategy. How do I, how do I do this thing? But actually when we like relax a bit and drop out of our heads a bit and just follow, like I said, the heart, curiosity, joy, pleasure, things drop in because we become magnetic to more like things. We open ourselves up to receive. We're not trying to control everything because whatever your beliefs are, whoever's listening to this, like whether you believe in God, universe, source, creator, whatever you believe in, there is a higher consciousness working with us and for us. And when we try and do everything ourselves from here, when we're trying to make things happen and push things and force things and strive, we're making things really hard for ourselves. And so that is the biggest lesson for me was oh, I can create much easier when I relax and when I open myself up to receive and when I surrender to God's bigger plan, right? When I allow this creative energy that is around us and moving through us at all times to work through me. And so that, that's been a life changer and it's how I work today, intuitively. I'm very open to... Um, being a messenger and a vessel and and that that makes everything much easier it's when you're in flow right athletes talk about it a lot when you're in the zone when you're in flow yeah. things are just working out for you so yeah just relax and take things less seriously and surrender um two is now is the time as i said earlier don't wait don't put off your dreams until one day because cliche as it is it's true one day never comes the only moment we can ever be sure of is right now so whatever the passion is the idea is the the nudge from the universe the tap on the shoulder that thing that won't leave you alone create it now make that phone call now ask for that thing now and then thirdly 
I'm looking over here because I have a, 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 a gorgeous pick on my wall and it's kind of my business um, tagline and that's follow your soul fire. Uh, so follow what lights you up. I think that's actually really important because as a result of just like following what lights you up, following your passion and just like trusting the process and then helps you in a number of ways because then instead of working against things you're actually allowing it to flow through you and that way things happen more effortlessly and just like by following your passion and just take partaking in things that not only light you up but actually wake you up in the morning you then not only do you feel more passionate just to get more done with your day but then you also feel more passionate just to share your message with the world absolutely completely and it's so amazing like to actually be excited for the day right to get out of bed and, and you can't wait to create those projects to make those calls to have those conversations and there was a time in my life that it didn't feel like that you know when i would put off going to bed on a sunday night because i knew i had to go to work on a monday morning and i didn't want to go to work on a monday morning and now i love mondays I'm, I'm, and i i don't even know when it is monday because i'm working all the time but it doesn't feel like work so people ask me this all the time a lot of my clients will say to you know if I'm helping them with their business they'll ask well how how much do you work like what hours do you work and I'm like well I kind of work seven days a week but I also don't work at all because I'm creating things that I'm passionate about I'm doing things that I can't not do and so yes of course there are things in business that you know aren't necessarily in your zone of genius sometimes and things that you do have to do but most of the time for me like I am so grateful and so blessed and so inspired and excited to work because it really doesn't feel like it i think that that just comes as a result of like following your passion and just staying true to like what lights you up because as a result it doesn't feel like work it feels like you're actually like just having fun doing what you love and then as a result yeah. people then actually pick up on that and they want to be a part of it yeah, definitely. And that's a great way to connect with your true community as well, isn't it? And, and, your, and friends and clients and everything is just be, is being the example, being the energy that people want to be around. And you're doing that effortlessly anyway, because you're, you're so inspired yourself. I always say that to my clients, I'm like, if you want to inspire people, you've got to be inspired. Mm. Like, so take care of yourself first, fill yourself up first, go for a run in the morning, meditate, you know, play, do whatever you need to do to feel full and excited. Because if you're in that energy, people will be magnetized towards you, right? So yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. And, and you connect with, with the right people at the same time, like you're drawn to them. It's all energy. Definitely, I totally agree. And what are your views on morning routines? Like, do you find them useful or not? And if so, why? Mm. Before we dive into that, if you can hear crunching in the background, my dog's just decided to eat biscuits <laughs> under my desk. <laughs> so, apologies about the weird noises, if you can hear them. If not, then never mind. Um, a morning routine is really important to me. It sets me up the day. And this is something that I, again, talk to my clients about all the time. The way you start your day is the way your day will continue. So if you jump out of bed in a rush, you're likely to, to continue your day in a rush. And it is an absolute non-negotiable for me to have time for myself in the mornings first. And I, I'm in a very blessed position that I, I don't have children. I have a, a dog who can probably hear crunching. Um, so I have space in the morning to, to easily take care of myself. But even whatever your life circumstances are, take time for yourself, however much, even if you can only grab five or 10 minutes to tune in words first. Like I always say tune in before acting out <laughs> so rather than just picking up your phone and checking your messages or rather than jumping out of bed and going to deal with something in the house I like just take a couple of minutes to do the balanced breathing exercise that I shared earlier even just to center yourself to ask you know what do I want what do I need to take care of yourself first for me you know because I have my lifestyle set up in a way that I can really take care of those things I don't work before 10 or 11 a.m so I have like a full morning to, um, to exercise, to meditate, to make sure that I've had a really good breakfast, you know, to really, like I said a minute ago, inspire myself so that when I'm coaching my clients, when I'm recording um, 
podcasts, meditations or visualizations when I'm writing, it comes from a place of being inspired and filled up. And I'm not just hitting the ground running or trying to like force things. It's coming from a place of real flow. Mm. And I think it's actually really important because then as a result, just like having a couple of minutes to yourself, it then gives you that, that time to just like simply like, just like set intentions as to what you want to get out of the day. And it also just gives you that sort of that time to then recharge your body and just get ready for the day ahead. Completely. And you know, if people are, you know, restricted for time, you can do it in the shower, like use it, have the, have your shower and have that be your meditation, you know, set intentions. And so whatever time you have, be productive with it and ask, you know, how can I inspire myself? How can I fill myself up? How can I really just tune in for a minute to what I need and what my intentions are for the day? And the most powerful thing we can do is to tune in and visualize the day as if it's already happened. So you can do this in the shower, like I just said, just run through your head like a movie, how you see your day going. And it will often go exactly that way because our subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what we've actually lived in 3D reality or what we've run through in our mind. So if you can do that, things often follow suit. And I love doing that, not just for my day, but before I get on a client call, before I speak at an event, I, I will sit down for a couple of minutes and visualize how I want that to go. And most of the time it goes exactly that way or very close to. I, I totally agree. It's actually really powerful, just like a technique, just to simply attract the things into uh, the now that you then just want to take place in your day. And if you had to be another person for one day, who would it be and why? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be another person. I, I really believe we have like a soul contract and we've chosen to to come into this body at this time and i am grateful for that and enjoying the wild ride that is louise george <laughs> <laughs> and, but and but i um as an actor i really get to explore other characters and the, one of the things that people ask me the most about acting is like what's it like to play different people and my answer to that is often you're not playing other people you're exploring where is that archetype within me because we all have the ability to play a superhero to be a superhero we all have the ability to be a villain we all have the ability to be um a queen or a king or you know we have all of those things within us so what i love doing the most and this is one of the things that lights me up most about acting and coaching is finding where is that person within me where is that archetype of a queen or a warrior, you know? And, and I also do this work a lot with my clients, especially at events. You know, if you come to one of my events, you'll be in the room acting out these different archetypes as well. Because if you want to be someone else, it's often, we're often trying to escape something. And I think when I was younger, part of what I wanted to do as an actor was to be someone else and to play different people. And now it's very different. Now I get excited about finding where is that character within me? And exploring how I can, how I can almost um, morph into that person, and and access access that confidence within me or that anger within me, and, and that's what I love playing with. And so I want everyone to know that you have the ability to be any character you want, but it's never about, or it should never be about becoming anyone else, but finding what's your highest expression. Where is the queen within you? Where is the CEO within you? Because you have the ability to be anything you want. Mm. And it's actually very really powerful as a result, just like being able to know that whatever you choose to be, you actually can have it. It then puts you in a different mindset and just shakes up the whole perspective that you may have had as to like, this is something that I can then bring into the now and this is something that I can then work towards. And what would you say are your views on the word legacy? And what legacy would you like to leave? Mm. It can feel like a big word, can't it? I think for some people, yeah. like, what's, a, what's a legacy? It feels really, for me, it, it, it's really exciting. Like I'm excited to, 
to use my gifts while I'm here to make a difference and a positive impact. And when I started all of this, when I started coaching, when I started writing, my intention was really just, if I share my experience and my expertise and it helps just one other person, job done. You know, because I know also that you're never ever just helping one person. The ripples go far and wide. And so often I'll say to my clients, you know, if you're starting out in business and you're maybe running workshops for the first time or talks or, or anything, it's unlikely that you're going to fill a stadium, right? <laughs> Even if one person shows up, deliver to that person, talk to that person, coach that person as if they're worth 5,000 there. Yeah. Because the energy will be felt far and wide anyway. Right, you will be energetically. <laughs> my dog's having a mad half hour now. It always happens when I'm on a pop up. Uh, you are energetically, that vibration will go out far and wide. Plus, that person that you're serving, they're going to share it far and wide as well. So, it, the impact of, of, of that is an incredible legacy to me. I think that's actually really important because then, like, let's say that you, how you said about just having one person turn up. If you was then to picture them as though there's 10,000 10, people, then eventually that shall come into reality. So whatever you think of, just whatever you act as if it's already in the now shall come as long as you are like in alignment with that and as long as you're taking aligned action. And I think that's a huge, huge part that people often tend to forget when it comes to like just anything when it comes to like attracting things or just like partaking in anything. And... What advice would you then give to your younger self? My younger self? Good question. The advice I would give to my younger self would be to, if I could say this, to stop worrying and that you don't have to have it all figured out. When I was younger, I was trying to have it all figured out. I was in such a rush to do everything and to have it all worked out now. And I put so much pressure on myself because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I didn't know how to do the things that I did know that I wanted to do. And so I, you know, it would be to, to have fun and to relax and to just follow, same as I said with the three things, you know, that the three bits of advice would be to just enjoy, enjoy the journey, stop worrying and to let her know that everything works out. Mm. I think that's actually really important because like many people they just want to have that person in life saying like it's going to be okay and don't worry and things like that and just like having that and that's when it plays into like the network that you have because then having that inner circle of people who are constantly trying to uplift and just up level together it then pushes you to strive for more yeah definitely absolutely and, you know, so many people have those people in their lives, so, you know, great parents or teachers or, you know, friends that inspire them and, and let them know those things. But some people don't. And so, you know, if there's anyone listening to this, I hope that that message lands, you know, think everything always works out and to just really trust that and to know that whoever you are, you really can have been do anything. And it, it, it starts with you focusing on that you know use your imagination focus use your mind to focus on the kind of life that you would love to have because our mind is so powerful and no one can ever take that away from us that's the one thing that no one can take is the, the our ability to go within and to visualize the kind of life we want and in doing that you are creating that so even if like wherever you are right now if you feel like you're stuck for any reason or you haven't got the ability to create what you want or the tools or the resources or the support, use this. So you keep imagining and dreaming and visualizing and it will come true and you will make it happen. You might not know how right now, but it will. And the more you visualize it, the more and the more you feel. So when you visualize, when you're seeing the life that you want, the career that you want, the, the people, the family that you want, whatever it is, feel like you already have it and give gratitude for it. Because yeah. this is how we manifest. And you will be bringing all of the, the creative energy of the universe to you and through you. And, and that is a power that no one can take away from any of us. We all have the ability to consciously create our reality with intentional thoughts and elevated emotions. I so I, wish, I could tell my five-year-old self that now. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're not taught that in school often. <laughs> 
I feel that's as a result. Cause it's like many things because like not ha- not having that people in those in those times to be able to then install these all these like beliefs and everything into you that can actually help you in life and just having that at such a young uh, stage then helps you because then you don't have those limiting beliefs and like that there's no like barriers to break past because it's like a fresh slate really yeah exactly mm. and lastly could you share with the listeners where they can find you if they'd like to find out about any upcoming things you may have yeah, of course. Thank you. So my main website is soulfiresessions.co.co and I am hanging out on Instagram most of all, apart from there. So it's the same thing, at soulfiresessions on Instagram as well. Thank you. And there's tons of free gifts on there. So if anyone wants to go and grab some free meditations or uh, there's a Soulfire Spark Bundle, which is full of business trainings and meditations and visualizations and breathing work there's tons of freebies so yeah they can go grab those over on the instagram or the website definitely thank you so much i really do urge that you listeners go and check it out i'd like to thank you for coming on the inference show today thank you so much it's been gorgeous talking to you i really appreciate it thanks for having me <laughs> thank you i'm glad and ty and ty says <laughs> thanks as well my naughty puppy <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you <laughs> thanks Trey sean Thank you. And also thank you to you listeners for sticking to the end. And if you guys would like to have the chance to apply to be on the show, please do feel free to email the email that you on the screen. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And that's it for me. Bye.